Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. This is an unusual episode of Blazor Train because I'm not going to show you any Blazor code. But what you will learn today can be applied to any ASP.NET application. So we learned in episode 11, building an API layer, that it pays to make an abstraction using an interface for how you access your data. That is essentially the repository pattern. The consumer of data calls into a repository, but the actual data comes from a number of places. In the case of episode 11, we had one data manager that accessed data in memory and another that called out to an API. So now let's talk about creating a data manager to access a database using Entity Framework. Do you really want to make a manager for every entity you need access to? Wouldn't it be great to create a generic data manager that could be used for any entity, and for that matter, any data context? My guest today is Matthias de Carvalho, a contractor for my consultancy, AppVNext. He took an idea that I started and made a beautiful generic data manager that you can use over and over again. His video is a little choppy, probably because the kids were all watching streaming videos at the same time. Luckily, though, you can hear every word he says, and the code is very clear. Blaze a train! Mateus Carvalho, my friend, how are you? I'm pretty good. How about you, Carl? You know, as good as could be expected under the circumstances. So the reason that I asked you to come on here is because um, between you and I, we've concocted this solution to writing all this data manager code. I'm going to let you tell me what to click on here and uh, to, to give the, the peeps a little tour of this code. Yeah, so I think, you know, in order to start with an abstraction, you have to start with an interface. At least uh, that's how I, I like to do it. So if you go to the I repository, yeah, yeah. So they're very simple. It it takes you know, a a T entity there that will be your type. Um, yeah. Yes, and then you have the deletes, uh, the get, and this one we went a little further and we uh, enabled querying mm -hmm. to be built in. Uh, so that's really cool. Uh, and then get by ID, insert and update. Right, so that's the basic stuff that you would have in a in a normal uh, repository, so also known as CRUD. So now we have to go to the actual implementation. Uh, let's start with the memory data manager. Okay. So it's a easy way to start and, and test because you don't have to have any infrastructure. Uh, I create a dictionary uh, for that data type that we're passing. So let's say customer, and then I implement each one of those methods. Uh, as you can see, you know, it doesn't do any anything fancy. It's as easy as possible because we all we have is a dictionary. And then we go on like the delete method that you see there. You know, we go, we check uh, if the object exists and then uh, remove it, return true. And I did uh, put the flavor of uh, the uh, sync uh, that also enables the usability to be a little simpler for any tech you're going to use this on. So if you're going to do WPF uh, or ASP.NET, that should work very easily with uh, tasks and a sync. Now, this is the magic right here, isn't it? The get, because you basically can f filter right there as an expression when you're, when you're querying this thing. Yeah, so we can uh, concatenate the result uh, set or, or the, the queries that we want to do. Uh, so we start with the filter. So it does, that allows you to do, let's say, filter by name or by ID uh, for that customer that we were talking about. But then also there is a sorting that you can pass on. So you can say the property that, uh, that you want to sort by. Uh, in this case, uh, the memory uh, does not allow the specific fields to be uh, extracted. Uh, but you'll see in the context when you, you deal with uh, SQL that that part is going to be available there. So, okay. yeah, it, it, it is the meat uh, of, of the, the process here. 
Right. And then get by ID is pretty simple. There's no filters or anything. Yeah. Exactly. We just go see if it exists in this case for the memory one. If it's there in the dictionary, right. we return the, the record. And insert also. Yeah, so here I'm more or less mimicking what you would have in a in a database because the database would define the ID usually. So here I check to see if the ID is uh, being passed in. If it's not, then I uh, increment. Very simplistic. Uh, and then I, I once again try to get it uh, so we don't clash. And yep. I insert it. But again, this is the implementation for memory data that uses your iRepository. And I like this um, fact that, and I didn't even know this, that you could sort of use these generic types right in the definition of the class with a where clause. Uh, it's just, just fantastic. Now you have this entity base. Tell me about that. Yeah, so the entity base is just a way that uh, because we're working with generics, uh, there has to be a way for you as you do the implementation to get key parts of the objects that you're trying to uh, to, to create or, or filter or it depends on the operation, right? So in this case, uh, where we ID is very important. So I put ID there. You know, you might have other fields that are going to be present in every uh, one of your entities. Uh, so you can right. use uh, that as a way of defining that. And then you will see it on the memory uh, manager, data manager. Uh, you see me using that. Uh, otherwise, because it's abstract, right. you wouldn't be able to do it. And here's an implementation of customer, right? There you go. So the customer has an ID and a name. Exactly. Yeah, that's all. Uh, all I'm doing there. Excellent. Okay, so now let's talk about the magic, the data manager itself. So this is where you're also implementing iRepository, but you've got a couple uh, uh, of things that make this completely magic, specifically the ability to pass in a data context when you create it, not just the entity. Yeah, so the cool thing here is I wanted to create something that was as abstract as possible, right? So if we were to create this and put the data context that we created, that we have for our application already in this, it, it wouldn't be reusable. So what I wanted to do is actually attempt to create a path in which the consumer of this class would then tell me the entity type, so customer, and the, the, the context, the, the, uh, the SQL context that I wanted to pass in and work with. And that's why yeah. I did that um, path there. Okay. So most of this is going to look the same, right? Because you're, you're dealing with a, a data context rather than a, um, you know, rather than a, a, a dictionary. Yeah. And you get the flexibility of the data context or the implementations of uh, data context. So this one, if you actually go a little down, you will see that I have the the uh, the properties uh, filter right there. Yeah. So this one, I, because this is part of the entity uh, framework, this ability. So now we have that flexibility, and we get those strings from the parameter that we pass uh, when we call this method. And then here we can actually strip them down and include them in the query. Yeah. Which is really cool. It's very really cool. powerful. And uh, I've been using this data manager um, not with an interface, but with uh, uh, a DB context sort of hard-coded into it for a project that I'm working on. Um, but this sort of just takes it to an all-new level, and I really love that. So everything else here, get by ID insert, delete. I mean, these are all just your standard accessing the DB set and in yeah. within the context and then saving the changes, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really neat and it's simple. Uh, you know, you don't need to go too crazy to get these things, uh, to work for you better. Right. Here's the update. 
Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's very, very elegant. Now let's talk about the implementation, you know, how we would use this. So here's my main, program main, and you've got here two, you know, two versions of this uh, repository pass pattern. The first one is the memory data manager, and the second one is the other data manager. And um, if I just comment that one out, here's the entity framework data manager, how you create it. So you pass in the entity, customer, and the data context. Couldn't be simpler. Yep. And this is something that in yep. Blazor, you could inject, you could add it to your services on startup, and you could add one for each type of entity. And then you can just pull those out in your API controller and uh, go to town. Exactly. Yeah. Configure it once, use it forever. I, I, I love that. It's fantastic. So I don't have a database set up, so I'll use the in-memory version and let's just run it and see what happens here. That's so, the beauty right there. It's very yeah. swappable. See. Exactly. And testable. Yeah. Yeah. All in memory. You don't need it. a lot of infrastructure. And then when we're ready to go, just switch. So here we're creating a customer, passing my customer as a name. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just go over that. So here we are here in we the go. memory data manager, insert. There we go. And we're returning the entity, which is the, the pattern that I talked about in the last, uh, in, the, in the API layer episode. There it is. And then if it isn't null, we're going to write out to the console. And now we're going to set it to null and we're going to try to retrieve it. This is the R in CRUD, retrieve. So let's retrieve it. If customer is null, not null rather, there it is. We're going to change the name. We're going to update it. And it was updated yep. and now we're going to delete it. And there you go. Wow, so this is great stuff, and I'm happy to share this with uh, my my viewers. Uh, do you plan to package this up uh, on NuGet and make it available? Yeah, I was thinking about that as we were talking uh, after we we created this. I will uh, create something and and share um, with you guys and see if I can create a few more uh, repositories. Uh, already implemented, all virtual, so people can uh, extend it and yeah. use with uh, simplicity. So the repository pattern is just that, make an abstraction of how you access data. Like I did in the API layer, this just sort of takes it to a more generic level. But the idea is that now you can just swap one repository with another and your code doesn't ever have to change. As you saw in the last episode there, the API layer episode, the only thing that changed was in my Blazor application in the program um, uh, program CS where I added the service and the only and I added it by interface. So you would just add the repository service for you know memory repository if you wanted to do it in memory or you'd have an API service that uses the same repository interface and now you're you're it's ultimately flexible this is great stuff the other thing that you can do uh, when you have special uh, treatment that you have for a given type let's say customer again uh, you could create a customer that a data manager that inherits from from this guy here and then implement all the specialties for that uh, yeah that data manager as well as add other queries, uh, let's say built-in queries, right? Things mm. that you use all the time. You yep. just create a method there that does the filtering for you and mm. returns the data set as you need. And then when you're consuming, uh, you know, let's say get customers with A, you do that all the time. Yep. Uh, you just create a method and you put it there. And now you have a very specific uh, data manager 
for your type uh, and uh, still simple because every other property will, or method will be the same. Yeah, that's fantastic, Mateus. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Carl. All right, now back to you in the studio, Carl. In the time between recording and publishing this video, Mateus has put his code on GitHub. Here's a link to his generic repository repository from the Department of Redundancy Department. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Place a train.